Broadcasting from the Hyatt Regency in Seattle, Washington, Solutions Review is on location at the FME User Conference 2025, the peak of data and AI. Brought to you by Safe Software. We are back with Jean Paul and Chad, our good friends from T. Baker Smith. Uh, you guys are uh, all the way over from Louisiana. Correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, and you're you're pioneering uh, and and beta testing augmented reality uh, yes, with yep. with safe software and mm -hmm. and so talk a little bit more about that because we haven't heard that story yet. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So this was uh, around uh, May time. Attended a conference with Don. He was like, "Hey, would you guys be interested in in being a beta tester?" We're, we're looking at getting into the augmented reality realm. It was done in the past, and but they were revisiting, and they wanted to revamp it. And uh, at the end of the day, I mean, he, he didn't really even have to ask us. We were like, when can we start working on it, right? Like, <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very, very cool and progressive. And the beauty of it is that you really don't need much in order to get started. You don't need to go get fancy hardware, everything else. You can do it straight from your phone. Yeah. But you need the data. You need the data. Correct. That's correct. Yes. Right. Yes. That's the that's the trick, mm -hmm. and that's where it probably is. Which still has the potential to kind of come undone. It does to an extent, right? But from you know, like as far as the field to finish approach that we do on a day in and day out basis, we're taking it one step next level. So normally you're used to a two D view of a map, right? Whereas we go ahead and we're taking it to a different dimension where you're in the field and you're actually immersed in the data itself. So how does that work? Are you talking headsets and... and no, I mean, if you want to... Or is it just... I mean, well, how, break it down. How does it, how does it work? Well, um, we, we'll do, we'll do a, sur a field survey and we'll get this data and we'll bring it in the FME. We'll make a, a model out of it, styling it, uh, making uh, uh, diameters of pipes, colors adding labels and then we'll publish it to FME Flow and then we'll go in the field and test on the, uh, on the, on the iPhone and um, QC in the field and then uh, what we do from there is um, when we're in the field we can kind of see what works and what doesn't work mm -hmm. and we'll come back into the office maybe make some tweaks to the process and then uh, just make field visits and just kind of improve on how, how the, uh, the look of the uh, AR model is in the field and how usable it can be. And are we talking about when you're talking? What is the augmented reality uh, view? Uh, what are we What are we looking at? Are we looking it, underground? Are we looking at inside things? What are we looking at? It's a good question. Yeah. So, like our our our, I guess, pilot project is based on subsurface utilities. Yep. yep. So you know, a, a gas line, a telephone line, sewer pipe, really, really doesn't matter. Whatever's under the ground. Yep. If you can imagine you're looking, if you're, if you were where we're sitting right now, and you would just open up your phone to the camera, okay, and you're viewing just like you would taking a photo, okay? Yep. So wherever the camera's pointing. Wherever the camera's it's pointing. It's grabbing the data. It's grabbing the data in the actual, like the, the actual features. And creating a 3D model. A 3D model. Right. So you're, Whenever I say you're immersing yourself, you're walking through the it actual sounds, model. Yeah. Like an app. Yeah. Like it a is. Crazy, yes. Yeah. FME Realize. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then also to touch on that too, when you uh, move your phone towards like a, a, a underground uh, pipe, we'll have uh, the attributes pop up so it'll show like what the size is. And then we'll actually make the like size. Like a call out. Yes. Yep. A call out. And the actual yep. sizes of the pipes will be based on an attribute. So. Uh, this pipe might be a three inch pipe, so it's kind of scaled to three inch and maybe one on the side of it is a five inch. That's so, slick. So you can do that. And then you can color code them like for us, we'll do water lines in a blue. That's a whole another layer of data you're putting on top of that. Yeah. yeah. That then you, then you that take view. it to another level. And so you imagine you have your attribute data in front of you. You're in the field. Well, let's say I want to go and tie into some of my, my existing system applications right any other silos of data that I have and I want to I want to get I want to see what's going on and bring that data or basically query some features to bring in some more information right so they have the the connectivity piece there as well to go out and bring in data I gotta believe this thing demos like a champ yeah well when think, you, think of it when like you, when you show it to somebody they must yeah. they it's must it's got the wow it's, factor yeah it's wow. got the cool exactly. factor right but it's also practical yeah. And, and easy, really easy to use. You know, a good example would be I have a pipeline, let's just say, and I have a valve, 
well, maybe I want to see the schematics of that valve while I'm pointing at it in the field, right? So there's that capability to bring in that data and actually yeah. look at a 3D model yeah. and see it. You know, I mean, the, you're opening up Pandora's box yeah. is what you're doing, yeah. you know? Well, it feels like that's, that's what someone in the field would expect to have at this point, yeah. or at least soon. Yeah, and yeah. Another, and, another thing to add, too, is uh, if you're in the field, and you notice something that's not in your model, say a valve or a catch basin, uh, you can have the ability to actually tie that yeah. object in and add a note saying this is a you know three inch valve and it'll populate. So you can kind of do some QC in the field as well, like just mm -hmm. see in case it wasn't picked up on the on this on the survey. So uh, yeah. so you guys have this data anyway. Is that mm -hmm. is that it? Have you had that's to go correct. grab other data or or or, or augment you, the data sets you have with with other uh, how do you how did you pull it all together for you us, already had it and, we already have yeah. it right so um, a main focus on on our organization is survey yep we've uh, you know over over 100 100 plus years yep. old whatnot we have a lot of data but we survey all day every day yep but that is I mean we're multi multiple disciplines let's say but so we have access to all the survey data at our fingertips. Right. So it's really to get the access out to our clients and say, hey, look, guys, we can take this a step further. You know, instead of us giving you a 2D deliverable, how about, how about we give you an experience as a deliverable? Right. right? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, if you can imagine, you know, I'd go with the experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so. And yeah. this is uh, this is a. Uh, a passion project for Don is he uh, he's I'd say so. I'd say he's excited yeah. about it yeah I I'd, I'd say so between uh, Don Dimitri oh, yeah. can't say enough about yeah. Dimitri and how awesome he is yeah on it so, yeah yeah we gave a lot of input over the over the last few months with the testing and mm -hmm. just doing a real world case study on yep. it you know because this is actual data this is something that we will look at as a submittal so this is something that you know it's not just a yeah, test, right. you know, it's something that we were working on yeah. that would be a submitted to a client. Yeah, a lot, a lot of times you'll see, you know, as far as ideas, concepts, companies try to go ahead and use a fictitious approach to actually, you know, showing this is what it can do, right? Yeah, right. But we, I mean, we, yeah. we're using real life data. Yep. Know? So, yep. yeah, yeah I'm sure, fun. like I said, I'm sure a demo's yeah. great mm -hmm. yeah. for people. So, where do you go next with this? What is the, where, where does the beta end up? Whew. Where are you headed? I, that's, uh, we, we have a lot of talking and figuring out to do. Because <laughs> we, uh, the hard part is, is uh, staying, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't stay saying stay focused, right? That's not, that's not the hard part. It's, it's figuring out which path do we go and truly invest our time, right? So like right now, it's, we're, this was all kind of geared around transportation client. Yep. Right, which is, which is really, that's an easy use case, right? We're also looking at pipeline. Okay, yeah. there's all kinds of other different ways we can bring that immersive data to life in, in the in the hands of our clients. Really, yeah. I and think it's going to be more client yeah. driven. If yeah, I had correct. to guess, I was going to say you know? it's going to be more client driven. Yeah. We'll kind of reach out and show them demos and see if we get any feedback, and on then what. have them decide whether they want to take it down yes, that next level. Correct. Yes, yeah, and you and you have that data anyway, and and as you've been capturing that data, have you been yeah. cognizant of the fact that you might want to use it? for a purpose like this down the road i mean i mean it's been a, an evolution for yep. the company obviously you have to keep pushing yep. into mm -hmm. i mean it's sometimes i think it's tricky culturally mm -hmm. right to keep a, a an older company uh innovative it's, it sounds like you guys have kind of figured out that magic yeah well we're fortunate right yeah. i mean as far as as uh technology because because from a from a company our size and what we do we're we're really top pushers of using innovation every day not only through our organization so it's kind of like practice what you preach i guess you would say we push our technology through the organization to streamline stuff and make it better but we also do that for our clients yeah. yep where that's kind of how it's kind of been you know that's why that's why we do what we do on a day in and day out basis yeah and are the clients um are they expecting that level of advanced thinking around this sort of thing? I mean, again, I'd say it's 50-50, it, um, right? It kind of just... Well, some of it, they, they expect the quality of work we do and 
using tools like FME and having these processes kind of just gives us um, uh, good tools to, to better deliver these products mm -hmm. on time and accurately. So uh, we, they might not necessarily know what we're doing behind the scenes, but they're expecting us to um, provide data uh, in, uh, and you suck the time quick and and, uh, and accurately yeah so uh, and then we're using all this you know technology to do that you know that's cool yeah. i'll tell you what fme has always been a, yeah. a separator for us is that right oh sure. hands no. down hands down i mean it's it's a yeah. it's a separator you yep. know you, the more the more and more you talk to different companies interact with them and whatnot you might have competitors want to actually use some of your services right so it's that's that's whenever you know that you're actually doing something that's separating you ahead of the pack from your competitors. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Yep. Well, it's great to catch up with you guys. I, it, yeah. I know the last conversation we had was uh, was equally interesting. Yeah. Uh, right. So you're welcome back anytime. I love right. I love well, these thanks. types of conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, appreciate yes, you sir. spending a little more time with us. Uh, glad to see you out here. Uh, and best of luck with the project. Awesome. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yes, sir. Appreciate it. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.